Many resistance networks were broken, however, with the aid of torture-induced confessions. It is estimated that the Germans executed some 25,000 Frenchmen and sent another 200,000 to concentration camps. Most died there. Was it worth it? Well, I think it was. I, I'm absolutely convinced it was, because it must have been terribly nerve-wracking for German soldiers to know that any day they could go along a road that they'd been along yesterday and be blown sky-high by some bomb that the Mackie had put there, or come round a corner and meet a fusillade of small arms, but deadly fire. The sacrifices meant that Hitler had to deploy hundreds of thousands of troops to control hostile territory. Factories, farms, and mining operations were attacked by the resistance. The resistance was organized, effective, and ready for the Allied invasion. The Allies landed at Normandy on 6 June 1944, four years after the German army had decisively taken control of France. Tough fighting, hedgerow to hedgerow, put the Allies behind their schedule. By 26 June, the Allies had taken the port city of Cherbourg, and Hitler had ordered a counterattack. However, the French transportation network had been so crippled by resistance fighters and Allied bombers that much needed tanks and supplies could not reach the German army. And before supplies did arrive, the British mobilized another attack. Hitler's orders for counterattack could not be followed. The Fuhrer then gave orders that an onslaught of V1 and V2 rockets be launched on London. Despite firestorms in London, Hitler's demand that the Allies be pushed back into the sea could not be satisfied. German casualties far outnumbered the replacements that could be sent to the front. As German prisoners were taken by the thousands, those driving German tanks and trucks were short 200,000 gallons of fuel each day. Only 400 tons of supplies were reaching the German front on a daily basis. More than 2,200 tons were required. As the Allies fought to annihilate German opposition, casualties were in the hundreds of thousands. But through a series of major actions, the Allied advance picked up speed. Again, resistance fighters were involved. These fighters were instrumental in identifying German emplacements so that Allied forces could go around them and avoid time-consuming firefights. It's very much, to, greatly to their credit, the fact that they are um, said by both Montgomery and Eisenhower as having shortened the war by between three and six months. Whatever Allied troops were fighting, they benefited from resistance groundwork. Emboldened by the Allied action, the citizens of Paris were waiting their turn. In June 1940, there were three million Parisians. As the German invading force drew near, two million fled. But having few nearby places to go that were not controlled by the Germans, many returned to find their city of light reduced to a drag ember. Except for motor cars driven by Germans, the streets were still. 
Except for public buildings and German quarters, Paris was without light or heat much of the time. In a city known worldwide for its culinary delights, everything was rational. Unless you were German. The Germans had first call on the most desirable food. Throughout the war, and especially with the D-Day invasion, Parisians yearned for one thing above all else, the liberation of their city. But Allied commanders had decided that it was more important to take Berlin. In addition to wanting to strike at the German heartland and bring an earlier end to the war, the Allies knew that to divert the necessary supplies to a liberated Paris would further complicate logistics. In addition, the Allies feared that a protracted house-to-house -house fight against the Germans would virtually destroy the city. Unknown to the Allies, Hitler had already ordered the complete destruction of Paris. Meanwhile, rival factions inside, communists and Gaullists, were each looking to prevent the other from taking control of France when the war ended and began competing insurrections in the streets. The commander of the German garrison in Paris, Major General Dietrich von Schultitz, had concluded after a face-to-face -face meeting with Hitler that the Führer was insane. He ignored the order to destroy the city. But Schultitz had more immediate problems. Resistance fighters built 400 barricades. They were in all parts of the city. And at each fortress, Parisians vowed to make the Nazis pay for four years of barbarous treatment. To make the streets doubly impassable, Parisians tore up cobblestones. Trees were also used as blockades. Motor cars and lorries piled high in boulevards and alleyways, hampering German movement. The barricades closed in around the Germans like a trap. The resistance made steady gains.
As sporadic fighting became more intense, German casualties mounted. But despite four years of often brutal occupation, Parisians helped wounded German soldiers as often as they helped one another. Many Nazi soldiers had vowed to fight to the end. Many more simply gave up. Tired and scared, many appeared relieved that their fight was over. Collaborators had to face their fellow Parisians. including Marshal Patin. Dozens of key buildings fell into resistance hands. Inside the Bank of France, liberators found 400,000 bottles of cognac, 3 million cigars, and 235 tons of sugar. With fighting still underway throughout the city, the new mayor of Paris dodged sniper fire to enter the gates of the city hall. An impromptu show of respect said more than words about the hope Parisians had for the future. With fighting still raging in the streets, General von Scholtitz looked for ways to prevent further bloodshed and save Paris. He allowed a delegation led by a Swedish diplomat to cross German lines and meet with the Allies. This was to encourage a speedier attack on Paris. A second group also went through the lines. Their report to General Eisenhower that conditions on the streets of Paris had reached a crisis stage prompted a change in Allied plans. Eisenhower ordered French forces to retake the French capital. With word of the new plan, jubilant Parisians prepared for the Allied push into Paris by capturing German weapons and equipment. Parisians were called to the streets. Germans would soon be defeated with the help of their own guns. Parisians also liberated some of the food taken from them by their German captors. Wine, too. Soon, the scent of once scarce gourmet delights competed with the smells of gunpowder and petrol in the streets. The fighting on both sides was most urgent now. Despite having encouraged the Allied attack on Paris, General von Schultz would not give up without a fight either outside or inside the city. Well, 
German artillery bombarded French troops on the outskirts of Paris, a small French tank detachment discovered an opening in German defences. It rolled unhindered into Paris at 9.30 at night. By the next morning, 25 August, the French 2nd Armoured Division, led by General Leclerc, entered the city with the US 4th Infantry. All along the way, the French expressed their joy. Church bells, which had been silent for four years, pealed throughout the capital. But when it came to barricades, Parisians had done their jobs too well. They now had to remove them to allow the Allies through, so that mop-up operations against German troops would not be impaired. French forces were given the primary responsibility for the fight ahead. Remaining German strongholds had to be identified. Battle positions were taken. Snipers were an ever-present danger, but Parisians had to be there to see for themselves the long-anticipated liberation of their city. Resistance fighters did not sit back and let the army work alone. The atmosphere was surreal. One street was quiet, while in the next, a fight was raging. Unfortunately, discipline was lax, and casualties among the liberators were high.
French and the Americans were systematic and relentless. The Germans knew the end was near. began as a trickle of surrendering Germans became a torrent. o'clock in the afternoon, General Choted surrendered his forces. Charles de Gaulle entered Paris and addressed his beloved France. Electricity was in the air as thousands thronged to see and hear for themselves the fulfillment of their dreams. De Gaulle gave an impassioned speech and for the first time in four years, a free Frenchman addressed his people over the radio while standing on home soil. De Gaulle could finally express his joy at the victory which had just been won. There are moments that we all feel which stand above our poor lives. Paris, Paris outraged, Paris broken, Paris martyred. But Paris freed, freed by itself, freed by its people, with the help of the armies of France, with the help and assistance of the whole of France. That is the France which fights, the only France, the eternal France. But the Germans was far from over, but for a time the world watched as Parisians enjoyed restored freedom in one of their brightest and most inspiring moments. Five decades after the war in Europe, veterans still walk down the streets of Paris and recall the famous battles fought in 1944. Though future generations may not appreciate the sacrifices made during those glorious days. <laughs> 